and thank you for tuning in to Reimagining the Possible Session with PwC Women in Technology. I'm Mitra Best, the lead partner for Strategic Innovation and Technology at PwC, and I'm also the co-lead of our Women in Tech effort. I'm joined here today by my co-lead, my friend and work sister, Andrea Fishman. Hi, Andrea. And my dear colleagues and partners, Jane Allen, Hadley Leach, and Sharon Kane. Welcome, everyone. In the next 30 minutes, we'll have a conversation about our various roles and experiences as technology executives at PwC. So let's get started with a round of introductions to tell you who we are, what we do at work, and give you a glimpse of where we came from. I'll start. Again, I'm Mitra Best. Like many of you watching, I have a degree in computer science. And I want to give a big thank you to UCLA for a world-class education and a big shout out to all the Bruins watching. I then pursued my graduate studies in innovation and strategy at MIT and then Stanford. And I founded and sold two startups before coming to PwC, where I've had a robust technology career from software development to technology strategy to applied research and innovation. In my current role, I oversee teams that develop innovative technology platforms and new business models that focus on the future of work. We come up with new ideas that challenge status quo and through design thinking and prototyping, we incubate those ideas. And once we've de-risked them, we actually build the you know, build and develop those enterprise applications. I love my work. And more importantly, I love the people I work with. The diversity of thought and perspective on my teams helps me learn every day how to be a professional, how to improve as a person, and how to be a great leader. I hope that you consider joining our family and I look forward to welcoming you when you do. Andrea, do you want to go next? Hi, my name is Andrea Fishman, and thank you for joining us today. I'm a partner here at PwC in our tech, media, and telecom practice, and along with Mitra, the co-lead of our Women in Tech platform. Thank you, Mitra and Andrea, for inviting me to join you here today and with this amazing panel of PwC women. My name is Hadley Leach, and I'm a partner in PwC's tax practice. And when I was in college, I explored many different career paths. I took classes in engineering, in design and architecture, and in the business school. And what I didn't realize then is that I was preparing to be a design thinker. And so what do I mean by design thinking? Well, I'd like to read a description from Tim Brown, who is the CEO of IDEO and a pioneer in this space. Design thinking is a human-centered approach to innovation. It draws from the designer's toolkit to integrate the needs of people, the possibilities of technology, and the requirements for business success. It's really that intersection of designing for people, applying technology, and driving business success that inspires and motivates me every day. When I first started my career as a tax professional, I thought I was entering a glamorous world of tax policy and strategic planning. And what I found, I found myself drowning in oceans of data and mounds of paperwork. And so it didn't take me long to embrace the idea that there's gotta be a better way. And it's the pursuit of that better way that set me on a course and has defined my career ever since. So here I am today, a tax partner, focused on delivering technology enabled solutions. It's pretty cool. Hi, I'm Jane Allen. I am a partner based in Northern California, a lifelong Bay Area resident. Um, I am a partner in our cyber privacy and forensics practice. I focus on topics such as data risk um, and information governance and essentially the convergence of a number of things related to cyber, privacy, legal, regulatory, and operational risk and how companies think about managing that data and information. Um, I am also really honored and privileged to serve on our U.S. board um, and sit on our government security and our risk and quality committees. Um, I'll also mention I am an alum of UC Berkeley. Go Bears for any of you out there um, and help lead our recruiting campus um, efforts. 
Um, and lastly, I'm a single mom of an 11 year old daughter who's figuring her way through virtual middle school right now. So um, thrilled to be here, especially for Grace Hopper. Um, such an incredible event, such an incredible list of attendees and with all of you, my fellow partners. So thanks so much for having me today. Hi, I'm Sharon Kane, and it's a pleasure to be here today. I'm a partner in PwC's assurance practice. I'm an accountant by trade. I'm a CPA. Uh, I went to Babson College where I got my accounting degree and have really uh, focused my career at PwC on, on providing accounting and auditing services to our clients. Uh, and and um, me, recently I've been asked to take on a role leading uh, in an innovations um, function to help provide some additional structure and um, creativity and experimentation around how we leverage technology to deliver services to our clients more efficiently and effectively, how we leverage data um, to provide our clients insights, and how we make the um, technology experience um, better for the staff and, and people that we have serving our clients in the assurance practice. In listening to everyone describe their roles, it's obvious that innovation is an underlying theme that is a critical success factor for all of us. Sharon, in, in your role, how do you describe and define innovation? And how have you become an entrepreneur at PwC? Because I know you have. I, you know, the, particularly the role that I've just taken um, allows me to be an entrepreneur because uh, my my users are the internal PwC resources that um, you know every day come to work and have to leverage technology to serve our clients, to meet our regulatory obligations, and to to do the work that's required of us. And I, I get the um, opportunity to try to partner with um, all sorts of technology experts, of which I'm not one, um, and try to assimilate just the best ideas and how they'll fit within our practice um, and, and what the user reaction will be and, and think about how do we you know make them part of our daily practice so that we improve on, on our you know current, current practices. As technology becomes more pervasive in our workplace, there often is a challenge of how do we make our interactions more personal and more connected, especially as we're working more remotely. I want to turn this question over to Hadley. Hadley, how have you seen your teams act more creatively in adopting new ways of working to create human connections through the use of technology? My favorite uh, story of applying technology to drive innovation and, and doing that in a way that's human-centered and creates and maintains human connections is all about collaboration platforms. And uh, I, I cannot imagine in this moment going through the pandemic without having the technology that we have available today. And uh, likewise, I've been incredibly impressed with uh, my teams who have embraced uh, the collaboration platforms and technology capabilities to um, uh, to enable meaningful um, interactions and do that in a way that is, of course, uh, empathetic to uh, what we're, we're all experiencing and, and the challenges we're facing. Uh, so I'll give you a couple of quick examples of how that's working in practice. Um, one is a digital upskilling and transformation program that we launched with a client back in the spring. And we had planned uh, to launch uh, well before the pandemic uh, hit. And uh, we would typically deliver this type of program in um, a, an in-person physical environment. So uh, once we were not able to do that, we needed to quickly pivot to uh, a, an online platform and um, create a virtual experience that would accomplish uh, the same mission. And um, that uh, needed to that platform needed to enable um, three key uh, levels of interaction. And the first is uh, a classroom environment. And uh, while we all know how challenging it's been for schools and universities and organizations around the world to adapt in-person classroom experiences into a virtual online environment. So we, we face the same challenge. Um, second, we needed to facilitate uh, group uh, innovation labs that were collaborative and inspired um, ideation around how to apply the automation and analytic 
capabilities and skills that were um, developed in the classroom and uh, apply them to uh, a participant's day-to-day -day job responsibilities. And then third, we needed to uh, enable a one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching and um, support uh, uh, um, level from uh, digital trainers. So um, we, we, we created a platform and ultimately a community that could uh, effectively enable all three uh, and do it in an engaging way um, that produced the, the business results that we were striving for. We launched a uh, program for middle school girls over the summer as well. Uh, again, we had planned to do this in person in a physical environment. And uh, if we were gonna move ahead with the program, we needed to adapt that to a virtual uh, environment as well. And um, so this is a program, uh, it's called Junior Next Gen. Uh, it was inspired by and sponsored by the women in tech um, community that uh, Mitra and Andrea lead. And I'm so privileged to be a part of. Uh, so uh, we did launch the program and um, did it in a way that uh, we were empathetic to the challenges that uh, these middle school girls faced um, and with the mission to inspire them to um, explore and uh, pursue careers in technology um, or other STEM professions. So, um, so that's that's, that's my favorite story about technology and applying a human-centered mindset um, to deliver innovation. When you're innovating, by definition, you're taking a risk because you're doing something for the first time, something that hasn't been done before. You don't know how it's gonna turn out. And depending where you are in, in your career, you may have or may not have an appetite to take a risk. Jane. I know you have a lot of stories about taking risks. So can you share with us a pivotal moment in your career where you took a risk to use technology in a way that was different and new? And tell us what prepared you to take that risk and what were the challenges that you had to overcome? That's a really good question, Mitra. Um, it, it, it's interesting. I could probably cite a whole slew of examples throughout my career, but there's one that stands out particularly. Um, this was about a decade ago, um, working in a crisis situation for our clients. So again, a number of the areas that I work in um, help support various legal and regulatory matters. So the way that we approach problems um, creatively or um, no matter how complex, we have to think about how defensible it is um, and the rigor behind it should we need to have someone defend it in a court, um, a regulatory situation and such. Um, so it needs to be repeatable and defensible. Um, we were helping our client through this crisis. Um, it was a catastrophic incident which just spawned years and years of work, um, but namely incredible amounts of volumes of regulatory investigations and inquiries and legal matters. Um, we had an incredibly huge deadline that was an imperative um, that most of us were just running, and I, I kid you not, 24-7 um, in the time leading up to that. Um, I hope not to work those kind of hours again, but again, very, very unique situation of something that had not occurred in the industry before. Um, and so while we were working as quickly as possible to sift through and review to ultimately provide this set of data and information to the regulators, um, the volume, the complexity and such was at a pace that we didn't think we were going to get there. So we are probably the night before two in the morning, my colleague and I and a few of the clients trying to figure out what we're going to do. And you have that element of wanting to stay to things you know, but also knowing it's not going to work. I didn't think that the timing was going to work. And so we needed to take a calculated risk and you can feel your blood pumping. You can get nervous about it. And it was a point where, you know, I vetted and talked with my uh, colleague just real time and we just said, go, let's do it. Um, and it was a combination of applying a lot of little technical fixes to help increase our throughput, to help increase, I would say, uh, or reduce rather human error um, in the reviews and quality reviews that we were trying to get through as quickly as possible and to provide some consistency and I would say some comfort to our client as well 
in terms of what we were putting out the door was going to be right and accurate and complete. So what we did was a, a mix of, you know, we call it RPA today, robotic process automation. Back then, I'm going to call it a fancy macro with a bunch of scripting um, to help automate as much as we could to output reports that either said, yep, everything's okay, or to output exceptions that we needed to go through and troubleshoot. Um, we were constrained by our client's location and computing power, just a number of laptops and a few desktops. And so we ultimately ran a ton of virtual machines on every machine that we had to try and again, bifurcate um, and increase the throughput. Um, and through a combination of all these different, I'll say, uh, creative, somewhat risky at the time, technical fixes and pulling that all back together, we made the deadline. And it was incredible. It was a huge celebration. It was a huge personal moment of pride. Um, and it was a huge moment of pride. And I would say camaraderie with our client being in the trenches with them like that. You don't get that every day. And still to this day, I've got a really close relationship with that colleague and the client. We will text each other through different things. Um, just having lived through that moment together. But I'm so thankful that we were able to apply technology in this way and, and take that risk. Um, we wouldn't have made it otherwise. Thank you, Jane. I knew you had great stories and this was definitely one of them. Andrea, we have so much fun working together, co-leading our Women in Tech initiative and community. I think it's partly because we have a shared vision and a set of goals. But I also think it's partly because we are aligned in our values and our guiding principles. You know my guiding principle, and anyone who's visited my LinkedIn page knows my guiding principle. Work is play with purpose. I'll stop when it's no longer fun and rewarding. I apply that principle to my own work every day. I ensure it for my teams every day but I also apply it to the design of our platforms and applications. Think about it. Using software should be fun. It should not be a drag. It doesn't matter if it's software at work or software for entertainment. It should be fun to use. It should also have a purpose that results in a rewarding experience and not a waste of time. So I think applying that principle to the design of applications helps us have users who enjoy using our applications. It also helps me be more fresh, more agile, and more creative and passionate about what I do. And I believe that that energy seeps into any kind of work that I do. Andrea, do you want to share your guiding principles? One of the great things that I've heard across this whole discussion is the intersection of creativity, collaboration, and risk-taking. Uh, Sharon, Jane, and Hadley have all really highlighted for us how it takes not just one of those pieces, but all of those pieces of the puzzle to come together to drive innovation, whether it's solving a tax problem, solving a collaboration problem, or just getting to the data quickly and effectively. Hadley, would you like to share your guiding principles and how they help you be innovative at work? What is my guiding principle? I, I love this question. And uh, I'm going to have to say that I have two that I really uh, strive to apply on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and the first is to approach my work with a human-centered mindset. And recognize that um, all the problems we're solving and solutions we're developing are for people. And um, you know we're, we're leveraging technology to do that in a practical way that delivers business outcomes that are successful. And um, so I, I certainly strive to uh, incorporate that principle in my day-to-day my -day way of working. Uh, and second, and I think this is particularly important for us as women, um, I strive not to let perfect be the enemy of good. And uh, I have certainly uh, been guilty of this in my career. And when you have a new idea or you're developing a solution, uh, it's sometimes easy to feel like that it needs to be perfect before um, anyone else sees it. So um, instead, I, I, I like to think about new ideas and new solutions as prototypes. Uh, and, and quickly mock up 
the idea or prototype uh, solution in a way that I can um, get a reaction from others and, and use that as a way to um, inspire the direction to test and, and refine as I go. So um, definitely uh, I, I strive not to let perfect be the enemy of good. Sharon, do you want to share your guiding principles and how they help you be more innovative at work? So, so it's it's interesting, you know. One of the strengths I think I bring to the to the role um, leading innovations is actually not intuitive, but it would be my lack of um, personal technology skills. Right, I'm I'm not a trained computer science um, major. Right, I I um, don't know how to create technology solutions. And, and a couple times in my career at PwC, I've been tapped to lead um, technology efforts, right? Ten, 10 years ago, I was asked to, to start our cloud computing practice and, and I had to go home and Google cloud computing um, to see what I had gotten into. And, and more recently, I've been asked now to take a leading role around our um, innovation solutions, as I mentioned. And, and I think, you know, the, this, the skill and the principle I bring to the table is almost that, be, you know, I, I, need, I need to tap into people that have deep technology skills to, to solve our business problems. And, and I um, am looking to build a network of people that are really good at it and um, be creative and open-minded about people's ideas and what they bring to the table and how to leverage the best of, of various solutions to try to find technology solutions that, that fit our purpose. Um, and so, you know, what's, what's kind of fun for me is, is this is all new space, right? I, I get to meet a whole host of, of people at, at PwC and, and with some third-party software vendors that I would not normally encounter in my in my normal day job and I get to be creative about how we bring some of these solutions to market um, within our practice which is a lot of fun. Jane. So my guiding principle I, I would say there's probably two so the first would be um, particularly again in the world that I that I work in um, you always should apply some creativity and again I think that's the fun part of what we get to do um, but I would say in my world, root that in practicality. And so to me, it's a, a left brain, right brain combination, which is fun, right? Be creative, find those new solutions, but what's also practical for what you're trying to solve for, what you're trying to achieve. And I think the marriage of those two um, things is, is pretty exciting and fun um, and easy to defend to others and or convince others to come along for the ride as well. Um, my other piece, um, if you haven't noticed, is just to have fun. Um, I, I think levity, is needed more, um, whether it's me being in you know a high stakes, risky, serious situation. Now, that's not to say you, you don't. Um, I would say act appropriately um, for the gravity or the seriousness of situations. Um, but working with others, um, clients internally, a little levity, it, I think, brings um, some fun to things that we already know may be stressful or risky. Um, and I would say, especially now during the pandemic. I, I hope that you all have implemented and, and used, frankly, I know I need a little levity with just all the craziness, personal, professional, whatnot. Um, and I think that's important, um, no matter how high stakes, how serious uh, the situation is. What's your advice for our viewers as they embark on their technology careers? Several years ago, a really good friend and mentor gave me a great piece of advice. She said, Hadley, when you're struggling to have the courage to raise your hand, to put yourself out there, um, to speak your mind, just think about what's the worst possible thing that could happen? What's the worst possible outcome if you raise your hand, if you put yourself out there, if you speak your mind? And uh, more often than not, uh, the worst possible thing was really not bad at all. And uh, that perspective really helped me to, to overcome my fear and, and have the courage to, to take some risks. When I started at PwC 28 years ago, I never could have imagined the path my career has taken. And my advice would be to be open-minded, to take some risks, um, don't carry too much self-doubt when presented with opportunities to try new things, and find something you're passionate about. The biggest piece of advice that I could give job seekers, both early in their careers and during their journey, is think broadly about the impact that you can have. 
You may start out on a product side or digital strategy and end up developing products and solutions. I think the one exciting thing about a career in technology, it's always changing. And if you're open to new opportunities and new ideas and new ways of working, the possibilities are endless. So a piece of advice uh, to everyone, you know, I have used this a little bit more often um, in retrospect as people often have asked me, okay, you know, how did you know you were going to do this and what was your career? Um, you know, I was an econ major again, and um, but always, always, always gravitated towards technology in, in different ways um, when I was younger and certainly still do now. Um, and people sort of know that I like to play with a lot of different things. Um, I, I would say the advice is, at least from a career perspective, um, stay relevant, um, keep being creative. So while you might be focused in a certain role or working in a certain industry or whatnot, make sure you are keeping your eyes wide open as to what's going on, the new technology, the new applications, the technology, play with it in your spare time. That keeps you relevant. And frankly, I would, uh, I would bet that many of you in the audience, um, also enjoy some of that for fun, right? So I think that's, Absolutely important, combining that with understanding, hey, what, what does the business landscape look like, right? So if you think about it, especially in our role in consulting, thinking about how that applies. I'd also say a piece of advice is just from a career perspective, make sure you have your key goals in mind, personally and professionally, but don't say too wedded or locked in um, exactly that timing or that plan. Um, I guarantee you your career and your life are going to take twists and turns that are unexpected and sometimes those are unexpected setbacks and sometimes they are unexpected incredible opportunities you would have never dreamed of and i would say just just know that's going to happen roll with the punches but but have those big goals in mind it just might not happen the way that you think um and and, and i think that's a good goal to have in mind um for those of you that are at the campus level thinking about your next career steps and such and those mid-career and where you want to go with that as well we all know that the pace of change in technology keeps getting faster. And the pandemic has accelerated the use of technology across all industries and organizations. What that means for many of you who are just embarking on your technology journeys is that now you have more choices of where you can start your careers. I wanna share with you a personal reason why I have chosen to grow my career at PwC. One, PwC's commitment to upskilling all of our employees and partners to create a lifelong learning culture. That way, we're never left behind with the pace of change in technology. Number two, our People First model enables every individual to have choices about how they want to grow their career their own way. And number three is our commitment to diversity and inclusion, which is both serious and sustainable. Through our Women in Tech initiative, we are striving to be the technology employer of choice for women, for all women, regardless of ethnicity and race. We're doing that through our commitment to gender balance in hiring and retaining technologists and providing advancement opportunities to all of our women through networking, mentorship, and executive leadership pathways. I hope that you choose PwC as your technology employer. I hope to personally welcome you to our family at PwC. Andrea and I would like to thank Jane and Hadley and Sharon for joining us. 30 minutes flew by, I hope you enjoyed it, and we look forward to seeing you at another session at the Grace Hopper Celebration.